Within the Batcave, the womb in which Batman congeals and gestates is Batman's trophy room. Bruce Wayne, being as insane in the rich man membrane as any billionaire would be, has a collection of items from villains past. There are penguin umbrellas, Mr. Freeze's tech, giant dice, giant eight balls, chess pieces, and uh, a gigantic penny. I can't just talk about the Batman Big Penny without also talking about the other two trophies that persist throughout most permutations of the trophy room. As much as I just want to jump into the Big Penny slop hole, these other two trophies are just as important. Those being the big animatronic dinosaur and the big Joker card. But in my mind, those trophies kind of makes sense in a more simple way. I mean, what rich asshole wouldn't have a giant animatronic dinosaur or a big playing card from his greatest nemesis? I'm sure that Bezos has a cave with Bill Gates' bloody glasses, the Elon Musk Wario suit, and Warren Buffett's McDonald's order. And both of these appeared in Batman pre-Big Penny era. While the Batcave was first introduced between 1942 and 1944, the giant Joker card first debuted in Batman 32 from 1945, while the dinosaur debuted in either Batman 35 from 1946, or even as far back as Batman number 10 in 1942. They've both been as big a part of the Batcave as the Giant Penny, but the Giant Penny is more important to me. It's been stuck in my brain piggy bank for these last few months. So I'm going to talk about the giant penny now. Debuting in 1947, the big penny is the one trophy of these three that didn't premiere in a comic that was exclusively a Batman comic. It actually appeared for the very first time in a Batman story featured in issue number 30 of World's Finest, which featured stories about Batman, Superman, Green Arrow, uh, Zitara, and, uh, the, the boy Commandos, uh, and, and Johnny Everyman, which is a whole different worm of cans. So we'll focus on the Batman story. Written by Bob Kane, one of our Batman creators, along with a bill named Finger, this Batman story takes us into the mind of Joe Coyne, the Penny Plunderer. His name just strikes fear into you, right? One of the most famous members of Batman's rogues gallery? No? Well, okay, let's talk about him then. The origin of the big penny in this story is simple. Joe Coyne is a guy who becomes obsessed with pennies after having them haunt him from his adolescence, selling newspapers, touching pennies, feeling pennies, becoming pennies, probably, I don't know, all the way up until his first crime, in which he tries to rob a place and the register only has pennies. He's arrested and his manic obsession with pennies being copper and being stopped by a copper creates the Penny Plunderer, a penny-based villain. Our first story about the Penny Plunderer is short and oddly sad. The dude just wanted to steal a rare stamp called the Black Penny as part of his coin-based obsession, and Batman foils it by rolling the Big Penny at him. That's all that the Big Penny does in this comic. It's rolled at him and doesn't even fully stop the Penny Plunderer. The end of the comic has our villain Joe Coyne captured by Batman and then immediately put to death in prison so that they can make a joke about how his life begins and ends with pennies because he's in a newspaper and those were sold for pennies. I don't know deflation. I don't know how currency works. That isn't the end of the Penny Plunderer by any means in Batman lore, and definitely not the end of THE Big Penny. Of course, the Penny itself would later be retconned because continuity is a nightmare in comic books and you would need a corkboard and a lot of red string to be able to keep up with it all. In 1966's World's Finest 163, THE Big Penny is referenced as something Batman acquired during one of the Joker's bad penny crimes, which I don't really know what bad penny crimes means? I mean, I guess if the Joker robbed a laundromat and took all the pennies out of the machines, but I don't know if a laundromat would cost pennies then, because I didn't look up exactly the cost of coin-operated laundry machines during 1966. So, I mean, that's my fault. And also, can I talk about how this comic has an alien 
named Jemphis, who makes Batman and Superman fight each other. I, I hate comic books. He fired his Batpoon. Zack Snyder, get on this. Bring the Batpoon back. In 1987's Batman issue number 410, it's referenced as Two-Faces Trophy. During a conversation between Batman and Jason Todd, the big penny changes hands faster than, well, I... I mean, you know, a, a penny. Even later still, because we're still not done changing the origins of a giant coin lost in Batman's hoarder hole, Joe Coin returns in 1999's Batman Chronicles number 19, with pretty much the same origin story as the original from World's Finest 30, but a bit of a different defeat. You see, this time the penny crushes our penny plunderer, Joe Coin killing him and sending him to hell, where all currency-based pun villains belong. And the story is told from his perspective as he presumably talks to Satan. At least the story of the penny plunderer ends up bringing a little flavor to the big penny. They use it as a Trojan horse to steal the same stamp from the original story. So it's not just a big penny, it's a big penny you can hide in. Although I will tell you after going through a ton of Big Penny appearances, Batman never takes advantage of the Big Penny being able to be hid inside of. It just gets tossed around a lot. Even later, later still, because we're on a roll here, a penny roll! <laughs> we jump up to 2008's Two-Face Year One, issue number two, where in the Two-Face and the Penny Plunderer origin story of our Big Penny, they converge. And the Big Penny almost takes out Commissioner Gordon, by the way. Oh! Two-Face straight up just murks the Penny Plunderer in this one, though, because the man's fate is infinitely sealed. He dies, and we can't change that. And there ends the story of sad, poor Joe Coyne. I, of course, didn't want to leave this video with you just knowing the origin story of our Batman giant Penny. I feel the need to also comment on its various appearances and uses as well, for something that you can really sink your teeth into. Get it? Like when somebody bites a coin to check to see if it's fake in like a cartoon? <laughs> or I guess when people had wooden money, I don't know. Although I'm not saying that you should grab a bunch of pennies and wholeheartedly stuff them into your mouth. I mean, hell, if you're Canadian, you don't even have pennies anymore, right? Would it be a big Canadian coin for y'all if Batman was from up north? Would it be a big loony or toony? Because those are funny names for coins. I I'll keep it a hundred cents with you. If I went over every single incarnation or appearance of the Big Penny in Batman canon, I'd lose my mind. That's 80 to 100 years of Big Penny. I just want to hit on some appearances of the Big Penny that I might find humorous or interesting or horrible if the art's bad enough. So without further ado, I invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy this discount Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon referring to the old nickel jukeboxes or movie theaters. I, I, I guess this would be like a penny -lodeon. Never mind, I'll get on with it. 1992's Batman the Animated Series, episode 35. This episode has villains gathered around playing poker in a club and swapping stories about almost putting an end to the man in bat pajamas. The important, to us at least, part of this episode is Two-Face's story wherein he ties Batman to, uh, what else? The giant penny. The penny is thrown into the air, letting Batman's fate rest in the flip of a coin! But of course, Batman escapes, because, you know, Batman, and he ends up keeping the giant penny, cementing its origins for this version of Batman going forward. 2005's The Batman Season 3, Episode 4. This time around, we have the ventriloquist and Scarface robbing the Gotham Mint for counterfeiting stuff. And the dummy and pals end up trapping Batman on a conveyor belt, heading towards a penny press that'll turn our caped crusader into a bat coin. Thankfully, what would be in the Gotham Mint right next to the penny press? Our good old pal Abe in gigantic splendor! Batman uses gadgetry to drop the penny out of the conveyor belt, freeing himself in the process just in time to take down a couple of dummies. 2021's Batman 89. This is a continuation of the Michael Keaton Batman world, and while I don't have much to say on the comic run, I can for sure say that it does canonize the giant penny in the Burtonverse. 
which is a phrase I never want to say again. Spoiler warning for these comics, by the way, since the big penny does get some heavy usage even if it wasn't in the original movie. In issue number one, Batman uses our large shiny copper coin as currency coverage against incoming gunfire. It's shown again in issue number four with Batman standing there admiring its nice and healthy glow after rehoming it in the Batcave. Issue number six, the penny is seen one last time as Batman and Two-Face have their final standoff. Selina Kyle then cuts the cable holding it up and drops it in front of Two-Face, causing him to struggle and start his descent into Whole Town, USA. 2012's Batman The Dark Knight Volume 2 Issue 5 The ginormous penny is featured on the title page for this comic, with a really cool visual. Imagine if Batman's parents died in Dime Alley instead of Crime Alley. Yeah, his rich-ass parents really did decide to walk down a place called Crime Alley after leaving the movie theater, huh? They, they did that, all of their own accord. They did that. 1989's BBC radio drama Batman The Lazarus Syndrome. Even in radio dramas, you can't hide from the giant penny. Alfred references it as Batman loses his mind trying to rid the Batcave of bats. Also, this radio drama is pretty fun. You should give it a listen. There's still some comic book bullshit, but I, I really enjoyed it. ...for disposal of everything from the trophy room except for the mechanical dinosaur and the giant Lincoln's head penny. Scrap them. 2022's Batman Urban Legends, issue number 17. This is an incredibly recent sighting of the giant penny, but while it just appears in a panel or two, I really honed in on that giant magic eight ball, which may be a reference to Detective Comics number 573, or a, another Batman moment that I couldn't find or source, because uh, I don't know, man, comics are wild. And I mean, I love the penny, but a man is allowed to love more than one ridiculous object in Batman's trophy room, right? Right? 2007's The Brave and the Bold, Volume 3, Issue Number 1. The Big Penny sees some great use as it shields Batman and the Green Lantern from a giant yellow energy piss monster. Also, Batman remarking on the penny finally being useful and Dick being revealed as a giant penny admirer makes this one all the better. 1997's Dark Claw Adventures. A comic published by both DC and Marvel under the name Amalgam Comics that combines Batman and Wolverine into one silly little guy, Dark Claw. The Big Penny has now been transformed into a big Canadian nickel! That doesn't really have the same kind of power as the Batman Big Penny, though, does it? So why even cover it if it's not a big or giant penny? Because the giant penny from Batman isn't just a giant penny from Batman, it's a state of mind. Also, this comic made me take two ibuprofen. 1985's DC Comics Presents issue number 83. Imagine a world where the big penny goes green. This comic book stars Batman, Superman, and the Outsiders against the Outsider, which after a little bit of research I found out is just Alfred after getting a little bit of mutant juice. The Outsider utilizes the big penny against Superman, transmuting it into kryptonite to stop him, only to be knocked out later, and thank goodness the penny is back to its normal, healthy glow. 2008 Super Friends issue number two. I had to bring this one up because this is one of the worst giant pennies I've seen, if not the worst giant penny out of a lot of them. This comic may be about dino trouble and the giant mechanical T-Rex gets more of a spotlight, but I have to just mention this penny. It looks less like a penny and more like some commemorative Beauty and the Beast Gaston coin from Disney. It's horrible. Why would you not center the face on the penny? Why would you try to fit the face in the panel by scooching the face to the left on the penny itself? Who decided to do this and why? 2009's Super Friends issue number 15. Same comic run as the last one, but just a little bit better. I like seeing the penny defeat the dinosaur, and it fills me with joy whenever I see it. I'm like a proud parent, but my child is giant currency. 2020 Super Friends web series season one, episode one. The Big Penny is back in animated form and it's evil yet again. Two-Face tries to use it to crush the Batmobile and since he has a remote control for it, can I call this one a giant penny mech? I mean, I can do whatever I want. So if I want to manifest giant penny versus Godzilla through sheer willpower, I'm gonna do it. 
2021 Super Friends Web Series Season 2, Episode 8. From the same series as the other Super Friends cartoon web series thing, but now a toy company has fully taken over, so it's got that weird, plasticky, awful 3D animation. Robin is left in charge of cleaning the Batcave, but a robotic arm goes crazy and sends the giant penny flipping around the place like a Gmod ragdoll. Once again, proving that it's the strongest of all of Batman's trophies. 2021 Super Friends Web Series Season 2, Episode 12. That's right! Another one. This giant penny was knocked down by Cheetah, who has invaded the Batcave, but thank goodness Wonder Woman is there to save the large one-cent wonder. Also, yes, another episode of the Super Friends web series uses the giant penny. They had the model man. Might as well use it for a three-minute YouTube video. 1950s Detective Comics issue number 158. Now we're heading into the Detective Comics, this time with a good old-fashioned trophy room invasion. The Big Penny comes to life for a few fleeting moments to almost crush our boy Wonder Robin. Also, the dinosaur is a brontosaurus thing in this comic. Huh. Also, worth mentioning that the villain that takes control of the trophy room is named Dr. Doom, and this is his only DC appearance before he dies after getting stuffed into a sarcophagus, and Robin calls it the weirdest of all of their trophies, but there's a dead guy in there, Robin. There's a dead guy in there. Get him out of there. Do you think that they keep the dead guy in there the whole time? Has he been in that sarcophagus for 70 years now? 1952's Detective Comics, issue number 186. Batman and Robin have to stay off of the ground and out of the Batcave for, you know, dorky comic book reasons. So they roam the air in the flying Batcave! Which, uh, yeah, I... We, it's the 50s. Thank goodness they brought the giant penny with them because they use it to stop criminals from using a diathermy machine? And I guess Large Abraham can stop powerful electromagnetic energy? 1961's Detective Comics issue number 291. A creature has invaded the Batcave. Batman and Robin decide that they should, uh, KO? K KO? K KO? Oh! Shit. KO. I've never seen it written out phonetically like that. Anyways, they throw the big penny at this green goober, and the goober flips it right back at them because, well, I mean, he is a giant green space alien. A penny isn't going to stop him, Batman, not even if it is the big penny. 1984's Detective Comics issue number 538. Time for Catman. That's right. If you didn't know, Batman did have a villain named Catman, and he's invaded the Batcave. Catman throws the giant penny at Batman, only for Batman to deftly dodge it, or I guess kind of use the giant dinosaur to knock it out of the way, at least. I mean, this is definitely a victory for Team Dinosaur, and I hate seeing the penny lose. 2018's Doomsday Clock, issue number two. A Batman and Watchmen crossover. Uh, while I may love the big penny, I also just love this split panel of Rorschach and Batman, and it encapsulates so much with so little, so I had to share it here. 2019's Heroes in Crisis, issue number four. Wonder Woman Angie, so she hit Penny and Smash Car. <laughs> 1990's Legion of Superheroes, volume four, issue number 11. Taking place sometime in the comic book bullshit future, this big penny is mistaken as a giant Abraham Lincoln manhole cover, because in the future, everyone's a moron, and they can't read the giant letters that say one cent. I, or, or I guess people just stopped using paper money and, and coins, but I, I, I like to think that they're just so stupid that they can't even read that it says one cent, but they still know that it's Abraham Lincoln. I mean, they don't even mention the word penny once in relation to the giant penny. It's insane. Comic books are insane. 2016's Lego DC Comics Superheroes Justice League Cosmic Clash. 
definitely a lazy giant penny. Brainiac has got a hold of Superman's brain and he picks up the giant one coin to crush Batman with it. I, I hate it. I know it's normal-ish Lego money, but I hate not being able to see Abe or even a Lego face on it. I mean, how are kids supposed to respect and understand the legacy and the importance of the big penny without there actually being an honest Abe on the front of the goddamn penny? 2009's Nightwing, Volume 2, Issue Number 153. This might be one of my favorite Penny moments, rescuing it from the destroyed Batcave, a rebuilding and rekindling of hope that is necessary after the quote unquote, because it's comic book bullshit, death of Batman. What this proves to me is that the Penny is the most important trophy, because what's more Batman than big money? Baby, not like big money baby. I mean like uh, big money, baby. And imagine me pointing like finger guns at you. 2014's Steven Universe Season 1, Episode 17. <laughs> the giant penny won't be contained in just Batman. It will persist throughout all media. Sorry for the Steven Universe flashbang. Honestly, this is just a Batman reference inside of Steven Universe. They're in like an armory, and it's just there because it symbolizes Batman trophy room. Other big lady have secret armory like Batcave. Batcave have giant penny. Steven Universe have giant penny. And I find it funny that this silly Batman reference is used in fan theories to fuel speculation about the diamonds, which I don't know a lot about Steven Universe. I just wanted to mention this because it's a giant penny. I'm not here to get into any Steven Universe dialogues or commentary. I don't know enough about it. I just know that there's a big penny in there and I'm gonna reach my hand into the Steven Universe piggy bank and rip it out. 2015's Robin Rises Alpha. I'm not gonna sit here all day and explain every single intricate part of this comic book to you step by bloody step, because if you wanna know the story of this comic book or any of the comic books on this list, you can go and read those comic books. I'm just here to show you where the giant penny is. I say that because this can be a little bit confusing explaining it out of context, because even in context, it's very confusing. So Batman jumps into Dark Side or Dark Seed or Dark Side's Apocalypse Hellplane World to rescue Damien, who is his son. I think that's the son Robin. And when he awakens from his sarcophagus, because Damien's in some kind of Dark Seed Apocalypse sarcophagus thing, he's dead, but he's not really dead. He gets superpowers, and then he's thrown into the giant penny by Calabac, who is Dark Side's funniest son before taking the giant penny and throwing it back at Calabac, and Calabac gets the snuff, toughed it out of him. 2014's Superman Unchained issue number seven. Wraith, one of those guys that the US government made to stop Superman or whatever, there's like 57 of them, is in the Batcave with Wonder Woman and Batman. But you know what happens when you're in the Batcave with someone who has super strength on tap? Yeah, you get a giant penny smash. Batman has to make a pun for this because well, wouldn't you? 2006 is Superman Batman issue 24. I love this giant penny. Batman finds himself on a different earth due to boom tube, dark side hijinks. And the giant penny on this earth has Mary Todd Lincoln's face. I enjoy it when they switch it up. What can I say? 2019's Teen Titans volume six issue 26. Roundhouse, who's a member of the Teen Titans sometimes, for those of you who aren't giant comic nerds, or DC encyclopedias, hides behind the giant penny as the Titans have invaded the Batcave. I just wanted to mention this one because Roundhouse plays Fortnite and says that he'll cut back on his Fortnite hours if he's kept safe, and anytime Fortnite is mentioned in a comic book, I laugh. Sometimes it's a sad laugh, sometimes it's a good laugh, but a laugh is a laugh nonetheless. And this penny is missing a year. No 1945, no 1947, no 1901. Just a timeless big penny. 2008's Tiny Titans issue number three. Remember earlier when I said that that giant penny was the worst giant penny I've ever seen? This may in fact be the worst giant penny I've ever seen. It's 
completely realistic looking in comparison to the art style of Tiny Titans itself. And that gives me psychic whiplash so hard that I can see the word whiplash in comic onomatopoeia. Reading any amount of Tiny Titans is already enough of an assault on the senses, so I don't have anything else to say about this clip art big penny. 2021's Titans Season 3, Episode 1. Nightwing heads into the Batcave for comic book live action bullshit, and from my own research, which may or may not be the best, since I'm not going to go through every single live action adaptation of Batman properties for a whiff or hint of copper, and I could not find nary a look at another big penny in any of the other Batman live action mediums that I checked, this holographic big penny that appears for a few seconds is likely the only time that it appears in a live action Batman or Batman adjacent property, which is insane to me. Batman gets a credit card, but he's too rich for big change. And before you go and look up your own Big Penny live action to prove me wrong, if you find the page that says that the Big Penny is in the hit live action show Gotham, that's wrong. It's not. That's something completely different. They're wrong. 2021's The Batman and Scooby-Doo Mysteries issues three to four. This is actually the giant penny sighting that set me on my mania. I read these comics for some Scooby-Doo related content because I love my cartoon dogs and finding out that Shaggy has an oversized pocket change phobia was enough for the gears to start turning in my head and turn, turn they did. And here we are. Issue number three is Shaggy afraid of the giant penny due to his aforementioned coin consternation and conquering it cleverly in issue number four to help capture the Joker along with other assorted Batman trophies helping along the way. Joker's trying to, I don't know, real estate the Batcave, probably. It's, it's cartoon comic book hijinks. These comics are fun. Pick them up if you like buying paper. 1998's Batman vs. Predator, Volume 3, Issue 4. Of course I gotta show the big penny when it gets cover treatment like this. Okay, the Predator is cool or whatever too, like I would love to buy the Predator Funko Pop at my local Hot Topic, but look at our boy on the front! 1948's Batman issue number 48, Coin versus Dinosaur, Penny versus Rex, a tale as old as time itself. Well, at least as old as this 1948 comic. Someone has invaded the Batcave, because someone always invades the Batcave and is setting off the trophies left and right, causing destruction and big penny deaths abound. So sad that this was a tie here. Really wish the big penny just decapitated the metal dino, or at least I, I would say that if I wanted to ostracize the former and current dinosaur kids that make up the bulk of uh, the people that watch my content. So uh, I'm glad this was a tie, actually. I'm very happy. 1982's Batman, issue number 348. This one is simple. Batman and Dick are trying to move things out of the old Batcave to the new one, and they have no idea how they got the giant penny down there in the first place. Unsurprisingly, it gets loose and causes a bit of alarm before settling down to its natural coin state. 1993's Batman issue number 497. This is the issue that I believe has the first iconic Bane breaks Batman's back panel. And we're not going to talk about that because blah, 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 comic book bullshit, blah, 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 Christopher Nolan, he's not a big penny, so I don't care. We are here for the penny. During the Bane X Batman fight, Batman gets shumped, whumped, and whacked into the penny, only for it to topple on his legs. And I guess cause him pain, but not really what you would think is a big penny amount of pain. 1998's Batman issue 553. I love it when the Big Penny helps instead of hurts. During an earthquake that shakes Gotham up and down, Alfred almost becomes flat as a penny himself. But Batman comes to the rescue with some quick Abraham thinking and slots the penny between the floor and collapsing debris. Thank you, Big Penny. You really showed your worth there. 2009's Batman issue 690. This is during Dick Grayson, aka Nightwing, aka Old Robin's tenure 
as Batman after some blah blah comic book bullshit happened. Somehow Two-Face broke into the Batcave and defaced our large favorite coin. I hate to see the big penny hurting like this, but adding scratches to it does make it more of a Two-Face trophy after the fact. 2012's Batman Volume 2, issue number 8. Our man Alfred, goddamn Pennyworth, uses the penny as a weapon against a court of owls assassin to save Brucey boy. I love it, and I love seeing us get our pennies worth. <laughs> 2014's Batman Volume 2, issue number 33. One of the more interesting uses of the penny, Riddler has some kind of comic book bullshit signal controlling the city and using killer robots or something, and Lucius Fox, Batman's tech wizard guy, uses the giant penny as a replacement conductor for his anti-comic book bullshit machine. The penny has a lot of utility, and if I don't see it as a character in Injustice 3, then it's a no-buy for me. 2014's Lego Batman 3. Someone in passing told me that the Big Penny is also in Lego Batman 2, but I remember for sure it's in the Batcave in Lego Batman 3. And this is one of those weird ones in my opinion, mostly because Abe Lincoln doesn't wear his hat on the Penny image, so it, it feels wrong, like I'm in trouble somehow. I mean, it's cool that it's there and it's cool that it's as large as it is, but why the hat? Give him some Lego hair, some two-dimensional Lego hair, and call it a day. 2011's Knight and the Squire, issue number four. This is British Batman, and he has a giant shilling instead of a giant penny, as well as a couple of other odds and ends, like a giant jar of Moomite. I'm not too fond of the British Batman, but this series is still fun, I want to say. Fun? I, is that the word I'm looking for? It can, it can be a fun short read. So maybe I'd recommend it if you want to get British, go down to the pub, get a pint of ale. I don't, I don't know anything about British. I'm an Iowa boy. Now that we've gone over the appearances of the Big Penny, there are three quick things that I want to go over with you. Those three things are, how big is the Big Penny? How much is the Big Penny worth? And how much does the Big Penny weigh? I've done some math here, and I wrote this out of my script in a way that made sense to me, but now that I'm looking at it, it looks kind of like how a psychopath would try to explain math, so I'm just gonna go over the stats themselves. Now, first things first. Pennies were changed from copper to a copper-plated alloy in 1982, meaning that if the big penny is modeled after a real penny, since it has a timestamp of either 1901, 1945, 1947, 1947 being the most likely big penny timestamp throughout all the permutations of it, that means that it is still 97% copper and then some tin, and then some zinc. We're gonna ignore that little bit of tin and zinc just for the fact that the big penny itself isn't really a big penny, it's just a big penny statue or trophy. Meaning that it's probably just made out of 100% copper because the villains in Batman's world are also surprisingly rich and they're psychopaths. So be it coming from a villain, be it coming from a bank, it does not matter. We're going to assume that the big penny is 100% copper, just to make this a little bit easier. Now, first up, Bruce Wayne is listed in DC canon as six foot two inches. And the Big Penny is about two Bruce Waynes tall, so there are 12 inches in a foot, 74 inches for the diameter, you multiply that times pi, we get 226 inches for circumference. Now for volume, we need a really good guesstimation to figure out the giant penny's thickness, and I would say it's about as wide as an average head if we use the lore that the big penny was a Trojan horse of sorts, then that means that it would have to be at least as wide as a human is thick. So we'll say around seven inches thick, because I don't have a real big penny with with me, much as I want one. So then we want to get volume. Volume is surface area times thickness. We'll need to take the radius of 37 inches, convert that to 94 centimeters just to make things easier. And after a bunch of funny math, we're gonna get 499,662 cubic centimeters. 
And then we got to look up how much copper is worth uh, and then use metal math magic to figure out that the Batman giant penny with the volume of around half a million cubic centimeters would be probably in the ballpark of 30,000 US dollars. And the weight of the big penny would be probably around 4,467 kilograms or 9,848 pounds or 703 stone. So that's that, right? Well, they list the big penny or at least the Batman fandom wikia lists the big penny as 216 pounds, which if it's hollow or made of plastic, I would understand, but 99% of the time, the big penny is just a big penny. And I don't know where they got that number from. And I feel psychotic trying to figure out where they got that number from. And I feel as though they're pulling it just right out of their ass. And if this is a number from a Batman comic that I missed or I just overlooked it, then Batman needs to get a new scale because he's wrong. I don't care that he's Batman, he's wrong. Of course, that's all a bunch of guesswork and random mental math mixed with actual math and I don't wanna show you my work because I'd be embarrassed and I don't wanna embarrass myself in front of all of the math teachers watching right now. So if I calculated this wrong or if I goofed this, uh, please let me know in the comments below how big the big penny is because I think I've got a good rough guesstimate here. But if someone wants to go through and figure it out step by bloody step, then absolutely go for it. Post your more precise number and put me in the own zone. With all of that, I hope you walk away with a little more useless information stewing around in your brain. Tell your coworkers, your friends, your family about the Batman giant penny and the story told there within. Because if you don't, then you'll just have to watch the video until the penny drops. And that's not a request, that's an order. Thank you for watching. Please check out my other videos there. Also, things, if you want to subscribe, there's probably going to be a button to click around here. There's also going to be a link to the Patreon. And I stream quite often on Twitch.tv. Sorry that this video took me so long to get out. I normally like to put out a couple of videos a month, and this might be the only one for September. So I do apologize. Uh, but it is a big and beefy one. So I hope that you enjoyed your time with me and the Big Penny. I'll see y'all later as we jump into October for some Halloween spooks and scares. Bye.